Year over year, the amount of properties that sold in April 2022 compared to 2021, we're down 41%. Now that doesn't mean prices are down 41%, just the number of transactions are down. And even if you compare month over month, March 2022 to April 2022, we were down 27%. And the reason why I make these videos is because I want you, either the homeowner or the person that is potentially thinking of getting into the market in the next little bit, to be up to date on what the numbers actually mean for your situation. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, Tom, why are you wearing a backwards hat in the video? Well, I did a podcast this morning with the guys from Spark Financial and the What Would It Cost podcast and they gave me this sweet hat, so I'm rocking it today. If you wanna check out their channel or the upcoming podcast with me in it, it will be in the first link in the description. This video is gonna be fun. Uh, what we're gonna do is look over the 416 area data, meaning Toronto proper. So we're not looking at the entire GTA today. I can do another video going over that. I wanna show you just the city of Toronto and why the prices and what you're hearing in the news right now is not actually as bad as it might seem. We've been talking about this for a while, but right now is headline season. I've done the news three times in the last three weeks because there's a federal budget, there's rate hikes, there's sales being down, there's always something to talk about. And a lot of people are gonna read headlines and come to conclusions, but I wanna show you how to come to your own conclusions using the data. Just before we get into that, I wanna thank you for being back here. You guys have been so amazing for the growth of this channel over the last little while. So if we can get this video over 250 likes, that would be amazing. You would definitely make my day. And we've been very lucky where we get to work with a lot of you. So we've helped lots of people that subscribe to this channel, buy and sell real estate over the last few years. If you wanna book an appointment with myself or my team, go into the description. There's gonna be a Calendly link right there. You can book a buyer consultation or a seller consultation. And final thing, we are almost at 5,000 subscribers. I think as I'm posting this video, we're like, 10 under 5,000. So I wanna thank you all for when we hit that number and I am still gonna do the giveaway. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now the market's interesting right now because prices are down from February. We already know that. We know that February is the peak. We've had two rate hikes since then and it's changed affordability and with buyer fatigue put in there, the market is shifting. Now saying all that, I've been talking to my colleagues and we had three offers on one of our listings over the weekend. We had multiple offers on several houses. Like certain areas are still being very, very active. Like the buyers are out there. The sale prices are just not what they were before the rates went up. So I wanna show you today the city of Toronto. We're gonna to go over three charts. We're gonna look at detached properties, semi-detached properties, and condos and show you so far from the beginning of the year until now, until the end of April, what the data is actually showing us on the fundamental of the market level. Okay, so let's jump into it right now. So what we're looking at here is a chart of the last four months. This is my amateur chart, but all these numbers are taken from the Toronto Real Estate Board data. So this is just for detached properties and it is also only for the 416 area code. So we're just talking about uh, Toronto proper right now. Started the year in January, the average sale price was just under 1.9 million and there was 2,200 sales that happened. February, which was the peak of the market as we know it now, we went over $2 million for the first time ever for detached properties. We had 4,000 sales almost that month. March, we dipped down a bit. We went to one, you know, 1 1.9, just over 1.9, but we had 4,800 sales. That is a ton of properties moving in March. And then if you look at April, the price actually jumped up from March, but it's still down from February and we had 3,600 sales. So even though sales were down month over month, um, the price actually jumped up again, even though February is now the peak. So detached properties in the city of Toronto are not that much different. And if you show where you started the year versus now, you know, really they haven't dropped a lot yet. And there is, by the way, another rate hike coming on June 1st, which will impact prices. I really do think it will, but we haven't seen that huge drop off that we've seen in the suburban markets. As we move down here, I wanna show you semi-detached. So semis in January were just under 1.5. We had only 445 sales. That's just because there's there's just physically less of them on the market. In February, we were at 1.5 with 751 sales. Interestingly enough, March was actually the peak for semi-detached properties, um, peaking out at 1.545 million with 983 sales. And then April, it's down to just under 1.4. So if you look at the chart here, it's like we're just back to January prices. March was the peak. And even though sales were down, overall, it was still pretty active in that segment of the market. Now, the one that is most interesting to me is the condos. 
Now, if you've been watching this channel and you've been following along, you know that condos have not grown at the same rate as the other properties because at the beginning of the pandemic, they dropped 10 to 15% in the city of Toronto. So let's go back. We started the year in January with condos at $760,000. We had just over 2,000 condos sale that first month of the year. February, we jumped all the way up to 822,000 with just under 3,000 condos selling. Then in March, again, just like semi-detached, March was actually the peak. It actually wasn't February, but overall the peak of the market was February for all asset classes with 3,100 selling. And then April, we went down to 820,000. So our condos down slightly from February and March. But are they up from January? Absolutely. In fact, they're up $80,000 from January. So if you bought a condo, it's going to be okay here. I still think condos have more room to grow than any other asset class. That takes me to my final point on this video is, okay, well, what the heck does this all mean? Like what's going on here? So yes, sales were down year over year, April, 2022 to April, 2021 by 41%. That's going to be the number that I'm going to put in the headline of this video and you're going to see on all the media outlets. The 27% down in sales was compared to March. March was a very, very active month and that happens most years. But spring came early this year. Spring came in February or March, not in April like it typically does. Not in terms of weather, but in terms of real estate sale prices peaking. Something interesting is still year over year, even though sales volume was down 41%, we were still up in price 15%. So the reason why I want to make this video is just to show you that like the, the, the city of Toronto has not actually dropped that much. Now, when the rates go up again in June, will it drop a little bit more? Yeah, I think it absolutely will. And I think still to the end of this year, uh, February or March are going to be the peak months for most property types, other than maybe like entry level condos. Um, but we talk about this a lot, right? You're buying, you're holding, and with markets moving down or stabilizing, it's going to take the speculators out of the market because it's no longer a guarantee that you're going to make money. And I think that's a good thing. So make sure when you're buying or making a decision right now, you're doing it with that long-term perspective. I appreciate you watching this channel. If you like this and you want to follow us on Instagram, you can check us out at the story team. That link will also be in the description. My name is Tom Story. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, home is where your story begins.